Hello and welcome back. I'm your friendly neighborhood technician. Today we are going to install the pulse width modulation controller and an electric fan on the 92400E. We're going to take off the mechanical fan that the car has and then we're going to wire this up. And just like I said, we're going to get this thing wired up and running just like a factory electric fan would with pulse width modulation. So you're not getting current spikes from the fan going from 0% to 100%. It'll ramp up from 0 and 10, 20, 30, all the way up to 100%. So you have a lot less draw on the alternator and your electrical system. And uh, we're going to go uh, through installing that right there and uh, get it wired up to where you barely even know that it's a part of the car. Because like I said, I want to do this like factory. So uh, we're going to go through finding a location for it. We're going to make an entire harness to wire it up. And it's going to look like any other harness that's in this vehicle, except it's going to be wired up to an electric fan that's running here right to the front. And we're going to mount this somewhere out of the way. So like other any other control unit, you can't see it. So here we have the autocoolguy.com pulse width modulation control unit. Um, now, this one might be a little overkill for the fan. Uh, it's, this is a 150 amp uh, pulse width modulation control unit. They, he does make a 125 and smaller uh, control unit for it, but um, I just went with the 150 just because. So this thing basically controls everything. You don't need any separate relays. You don't need any uh, anything else. You just need this right here, and you need to wire it up, your fan, your ground, and then also you're going to need to wire up all those different things. That's And so we're going to get this all wired up and we're going to get a harness built. And um, so this thing has an on off switch like that. And then this right here is how you control when the fan is going to come on, how early you want it to come on or how late you want it to come on. So we're going to go through that. We're going to need an infrared uh, thermometer so we can verify when the what the coolant temperature is when the fan is going to come on and then we'll manually adjust that according to how close uh, we want to the thermostat right there and um, so again it works like factory so i found one of the more difficult things of this job so far even though i haven't even started it yet is finding a location for this because this thing is really it's, it's a decent size. The other ones may be a little bit smaller, but this thing has a big footprint and it's pretty thick also. So um, finding a location under the hood is not gonna be possible. I looked over and this maybe tucking it back there, that's not gonna work because it's gonna hit this right here. Um, and even down back here, there's nowhere for it to fit there. Even tucked down there, it's not gonna fit because this fuse box is too close to the inside of the fender. Same thing over here. Um, I mean, if you wanted to remove your uh, washer reservoir or your, yeah, your washer reservoir, and then um, I wouldn't recommend removing your coolant reservoir because you need that. Um, but if you wanted to remove this, you could probably tuck it down in there somewhere, but you're going to be right next to the exhaust manifold. And so I'm going to try to, I was trying to find a location for this thing to where it's not just going to bake and uh, destroy itself. Right now my car is torn half apart. So I looked under here. There's not really a lot of space underneath the floor or there's not a lot of space down there either behind that plastic panel right there because you got two other control units down there um, that you need. And there's not a lot of space behind that uh, to stick that big thing. Also, took out the airbag to maybe get um, uh, some space back there. There was a, another video I watched of a guy installed this on his Jaguar. He um, pulled that, uh, pulled his glove box out and installed it behind there, but there's not enough room back there. I mean, there's a space right here, but that's not flat. And this, like I said, this thing has a really rather large footprint. So um, I'm gonna have to put this back in. That's not where I'm gonna put it. Now we come all the way back here. So uh, the idea I have right now is there's a full size spare that goes right here, but I don't have the factory wheels and tires. So I'm not going to put that spare on if I, if a tire goes flat. Plus, I have roadside assistance, so I'll just call roadside assistance, uh, get the thing towed, and then I can get the tire fixed. So I don't really need the spare tire in this. So now I have this really huge, giant open space that I could put it. So where I'm going to put it is I'm going to mount it right here vertically. So I'm going to mount it here vertically, right about here. You don't. It's got it comes with six screw holes. You don't need all six right here you're going to be able to use four so that's going to be probably like that and then i can put some screws in there uh, or some bolts because this is um 
pretty good steel right there. So I'll just put some self-tapping screws and hold that in place right there. And then I can wire these up and then I can actually run it through these holes right here so I can route the harness and it sticks close right here. There's not a bunch of wires that are gonna be out in this open area. And plus I gotta have a battery wire right there. So why not have the entire thing close to the battery? But the only problem with having the electric fan in the front of the car and having the control unit in the back of the car is now I have to run an entire harness from the back of the car all the way to the front of the car. So I'm gonna have to remove um, some carpeting, probably the seat back right here, so I can get the harness to come through back this way because the gas tank's right there. So it's gonna have to remove this trim panel right here, run it behind there, have it come out here. And then I'm also gonna have to make sure I wire up that uh, harness so where it's not gonna interfere if I, when I need to replace the battery. So it's gonna have to come uh, all along the bottom of the car, probably remove the trim at the bottom of the door sill and then tuck it underneath the carpet. And then again, do the same thing this way and have it come up under the dash behind the panels here because there's a kick panel right here. Have it run up with those wires and then have it come out this right here right here have it come out right here where the other harness comes out from the from the uh inside of the vehicle and then just run it and wire it up where it needs to go so for anyone else watching this video that doesn't have a 92 mercedes i'm going to do this video so um it's going to be as uh easy as possible for anyone that wants to convert their car to an electric fan to basically follow the same steps. So wiring it up is gonna be pretty much the same no matter which vehicle you have. Uh, the, the instructions do come with a wiring diagram, so you're gonna need to do the same positive, uh, you're gonna positive, negative, uh, fan positive, fan negative, the signal wires, the fail safe switch, all that's gonna be wired up the same basically uh, for what comes with this kit. So if you have a Chevy, if you have a BMW, Ford, any brand, it's, it, it's going to be the same. The, the only thing that's going to be different for your vehicle is what fan you're using and the uh, location that you're going to have to find for, to put that control unit. All right, step one is you're going to want to remove your fan shroud and your fan. On this car, there's an eight millimeter bolt right down there, right there. And then there's going to be two eight millimeter bolts on this side over here. There's one there, and there's one right over there. And half is gonna come out the top, half is gonna come out the bottom. Then we can take the fan off. Next, what we gotta do now that we have the fan out and the fan shroud out is we need to drain the coolant, then we can take off this upper radiator hose so we can test fit the electric fan. There, it's done. What do you think? Nah, I'm just kidding. Anyway, now you can see right here that it is too close right there. I did have to take that pulley off, which it does stick out a little bit on there. The pulley itself is not gonna, shouldn't make contact. It makes contact with the center there. But if you look right here, this is sticking out quite a bit. It's sticking out about that far. So once I get this trimmed so where I can get it to fit properly, you can see right here, it's gonna hit right here on the water outlet. So I'm gonna have to notch this right here just so I can get that pushed back some. And then there's gonna be some other spots. Right here, it's a little closer, but if you look in here, See if I can get any kind of, uh, there we go. If you look in here, there's a lot of space between the actual frame of the fan and the radiator itself. So yeah, come on, focus. Yeah, you see right there, there's a lot of room for this thing to come back. And then like this right here has to come back this way. And then also right here, it's gonna have to come back, that's a um, three quarters of an inch right there, which should give me enough room for the fan blades to make it around that pulley right there. So here are the fan shroud and fan. And you can see they're very similar in size, especially if you look right here, these pretty much line up. These are the pegs that's, that located on the bottom and that lines up pretty well. Um, so those are gonna be what I'm gonna use to keep that thing um, set in the bottom. Um, I may have to trim this back a little bit, not the complete bottom right here, but just these pieces sticking out right there just so I can fit it up close because you can see on this one this right here is not sticking out right there so um, other than that it's pretty close um, I can make it work and that's what I'm going to do or, or you look right here 
that tab right there and that tab right there pretty much in the same spot. It, dimension wise width, it's a tiny bit different. This, uh, this one is a little bit wider. So I may have to trim um, like this, this area right here and trim this right here to get it to fit one closer and two within the inside and outside of the radiator. Okay, fast forward a bunch. Now I have the radiator out. It does help quite a bit with fitting the fan, especially when you have to massage it and trim it and do a ton of, bun a ton of uh, trimming to get it to fit properly. And you wanted to get it to fit as close to the radiator as possible for sealing. It's not gonna fit 100% close. You can kind of see in there, there is a little bit of a gap. Um, it's kind of hard to, oh, there it is. Right there, you can see a tiny bit of a gap right there, but I'm going to use a bunch of this weather stripping right here, this uh, one-sided sealant um, foam strip right here, and I'm gonna use that to seal up the sides and everything. It doesn't, the fan doesn't go quite all the way down to the bottom of the radiator, but that fan is pretty huge. That's gonna cool just fine. I'm not worried about it. Um, but this is sitting all the way down against the top. One thing I had to do, I had to trim down a little bit right here. I had to trim open this opening. It kind of looked like this right here, that opening just like that. But I was able to get this bolt in there. This bolt is actually a uh, centrifuge cover bolt from a 272 or 273 engine. And that fits in there perfectly with the washer just like that and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a um a aluminum bracket that goes right over this and it's going to keep this uh basically pressed down like that when you put it, it's going to be about that wide right there and it's going to be um tightened down with a nut on top of there and that's going to keep this clamped into place right there and it's going to keep it from going down any farther and it's going to go all the way to the top of this plastic tab right here and then I'm gonna also do another, probably do another one here or here. I might trim this piece off right here. I had to trim this a little bit just to get it to sit down. I trimmed it a little too far that way, but it's, that doesn't matter. Since that sticks over here, it's gonna seal way here on the inside. So, um, but I had to get that so it trimmed flat. So I might actually uh, trim this off and then put another one of those uh, bolts in it like that and another aluminum piece right here to clamp this into place right there. And then also I'm gonna put the, um, so I'm gonna drill right here, oh, put a little opening right here and another little opening right there. And then that will be able to uh, put something through that opening and that opening. I did actually have to massage the top of the radiator a little bit just to get it flat because this tab right here was not flat. This was actually, that actually came out here a little bit. So I had to trim that off. Um, you can kind of see it's kind of like that one right there, how it's got a lump and everything. This is actually a radiator, there's a part number right there. So I did get it from, from the dealership but I did had to make that as flat as possible. So this sits as flat as possible to the top. And then I had to cut that tab off to clear the transmission uh, line right there. And then I had to trim uh, this corner right here also to get it to clear that transmission cooler line as well. So that's gonna fit, that fits pretty much just like that. And then that clears that right there. So. That's where we're at. I'm gonna keep trimming and then I'm gonna get those brackets built. Whatever you do, this right here, this is just how I'm fitting this specific fan. Now this fan, I didn't do any research on finding this fan. All I did was uh, I happened across this fan basically uh, from an insurance job and um, because the fan has a little crack on it so it got replaced because this was in a front end collision insurance deal. So um, the fan had the fan, just the shroud had a crack on it so it got replaced. And so it was close enough. So you might wanna do some research. You might be able to find a fan that fits a little bit better and the tabs uh, fit a little bit better to, uh, um, to mount it up to your radiator. But this is just how I'm fitting this specific fan. If you're wondering what this fan is off of, I'll actually give you the part number if I can. Oh, here's the part number right there. 246-500-0064. Um, this was off a CLA. That's what this was. Um, so. Um, that's how, this is how I'm going to fit this fan. Maybe you can find one that sticks down. I actually did find, uh, recently came across another fan on another vehicle. Um, it was actually from an SL. I think it was a 2014 SL. There was a lot lower profile and my may have to go to that one when I'm, when I, uh, put the V12 in it, um, because it's a lot lower profile and it'll give me a lot more space. But the only problem is that cooling fan was $800 and this one was free. So, uh, I'll keep plugging away on this and then um, I'll give you an update when I get the mount, the brackets uh, created and um, mounted up. 
Okay, here we are. Now I'm gonna test fit it. Got this little bracket made up so that tab fits right behind there. And that clamps it down just like that. This got a bolt drilled through there. Got a bolt through there so that holds that securely in place. Got this little thing cut out and pinched so that holds that in place. And then this four inch piece right here that holds basically this whole side. So everything is pretty, everything's snug. So I'm gonna have to take it off and then put the radiator back in and then this because this corner right here can't fit past the uh, AC line. So I think we're the power steering lines that's on the one side. This has to go in kind of at an angle and then radiator has to go in straight down. Okay, here it is. It's getting dark, so sorry about the light. Anyway, so it's not actually bolted down yet. So you got the bolt, the bolt in here for this one. And then there's that bolt. Where is it? There it is down there for that one. So I do like... So far, there is clearance between the pulley. It's super close, but it uh, does clear it without modifying those bolts right there at all. Um, but it will be a little bit better, just like that, when I get it clamped down. But I already see one issue that I'm going to have to uh, toy with, and that's this hose that goes right here. It is really close right here. Uh, and by really close, I mean touching. So. What I'm gonna have to do is, uh, right now I didn't actually do any type of uh, attachment or clamping for the top, but when you have it clamped down, there is a little bit more of this action that you can do. So if I do this a little bit, it's gonna give me a little bit more clearance with those bolts down there, and it's gonna give me a little more clearance with that hose right there. It's gonna be close, but at least it won't be touching. I might have to secure the hose to the power steering reservoir a little bit, but at least it won't be touching the fan shroud or the fan, which there are sharp edges and holes will be cut in that hose if it touches that. And you don't want that. All right, here we are. This is what I decided to do for the top. I just put two bolts in the top there. No, they're not going through the radiator. They basically just got the bolt went up there. So the head of the bolt is actually keeping the fan secured to the radiator because there's this basically like this lip right here. The bolt is just catching on the top edge there. So it's just that's not going anywhere. That's secure. And then it's all bolted up and everything. Bracket, bracket, and then bolt, and then a bracket way down there at the bottom. That's holding it. So it's it's in there. Now you can see right there how much room we actually have. Plenty of room. And then, so now I just need to get that pulley in there, but I'm going to have to get that pulley in there. So this is going to have to come back out. But that's basically uh, phase one is getting the fan to fit properly. Phase two... Uh, we'll be in the next video, which is wiring it up and getting it to work. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Um, this part is not really specific to any vehicle. I mean, it's, it's specific to this one with this specific fan. Uh, but if you have a different fan, you're gonna, your process is going to be a little different. So um, I'll move on to the next video, the wiring part, which is going to be the part that's not vehicle specific in the next video. So thank you for watching. Make sure you give me that thumbs up, hit subscribe, and make sure you hit the notification icon so you get notifications when I post a new video. Thanks for watching.